No matter where you go on this planet, you will find weird and wonderful creatures with weird and wonderful behaviours and adaptations. This means that there are many interesting wildlife facts to be told, but not all of these animal facts can be believed. There are plenty of incorrect animal facts and myths, and there are also plenty of misconceptions. In some cases, an animal fact can be correct for one species, but is often applied to a whole group of animals. One great example of this is the misconception that all otters hold hands, as this behaviour is mostly only seen in sea otters, but it is often applied to all otter species. In this video I will be going through just a few facts and stories that aren't quite true, as I will be going through 5 infamous wildlife myths and misconceptions. The first wildlife myth we will be going through today is possibly my favourite wildlife myth, simply because it's so widely believed. This myth involves the Egyptian plover and the Nile crocodile, and it's to do with their apparent symbiotic relationship. Both these species can be found in tropical sub-Saharan Africa, and they can both be found on sandbars of very large rivers. They are often pictured close to or next to each other, but in some cases this bird is pictured inside of the crocodile's mouth. It's been suggested that these birds eat leftover food out of the crocodile's mouths, and this is a form of mutualism. The Egyptian plover gets a meal, and the Nile crocodile gets to have its teeth cleaned. This relationship is used as an example of mutualism on various websites and in books, but this relationship is completely fake. This relationship was first wrote about by a Greek historian, but there has been no proof of this relationship whatsoever. There has been no credible video or photographic evidence, and every single image you do see of this relationship has been photoshopped. The craziest thing about this myth is that it's still believed all over the world, but if you were unaware, at least now you know it's fake. For our next story, we can head over to Asia, as the animal we will be taking a look at is the giant panda. The panda is a bear that's endemic to China, and it really doesn't act like any other bear. Like most bears, this species was once more omnivorous, but today the majority of its diet is made up of bamboo. To help them feed on these foods, they have an extended wrist bone that they use as a thumb, and this helps them to grip and manipulate bamboo. Pandas spend the majority of their day eating and resting, but they also find time to poo 40 times a day as well. The one thing that pandas are not known for doing a lot of is mating. There's a common misconception that pandas dislike sex, but this isn't completely true. It's mostly based on information from pandas in captivity, and panda bears in captivity live a very different life than pandas in the wild. Famously, some pandas have shown little interest to mate in captivity, and it's gotten to the point where some zookeepers show them panda porn. This has led to many people believing that pandas dislike mating, or that they have very little interest in it. In reality, it's a lot more complicated, and I think most people will be able to relate to the panda's situation. Pandas aren't mating in captivity because they don't like mating, but it's because they don't like their partners. In the wild, pandas are mostly solitary, and they only really come together to mate. During this time, females can be quite picky, and sometimes three or four males will try and court the same female. This means that the female will only pick her favourite males to mate with, but in captivity they rarely have this option. If a female is put in an enclosure with a male that she doesn't fancy, it's very unlikely that they will mate. In recent years, there's been more success with breeding pandas in captivity, and this is because females have been given a broader choice of males to mate with. Even if the female does find a male that she likes, the mating has to be done very quickly, as female pandas are only capable of conceiving a cub for a few days a year. So pandas don't really hate mating, they are just very picky, and really they have every right to be. Our next misconception doesn't involve a single species, but instead includes thousands of species around the world. That's because this story involves rabies, which has been an extremely dangerous disease over the past few thousand years. Rabies is an often fatal viral disease, and it causes inflammation of the brain. This disease affects humans and other mammals, and although it's seen by some as a historical disease, it's still a real problem today. The first rabies vaccine was created in 1885, but today not everyone around the world has access to a rabies vaccine. Around 59,000 people fall victim to rabies each year, and one of the scariest things about rabies is that it's virtually 100% fatal. 
Once symptoms appear, it's almost certain death. And the best way to treat it is prevention. In up to 99% of cases, domesticated dogs are responsible for rabies virus transmission to humans. Rabies is mostly transmitted through biting, but this is not the only way to get the disease. You can get it from scratches, abrasions or open wounds, or if you're exposed to the saliva of a rabid animal. Because rabies is so deadly, of course most people are going to try and avoid it. But there is one famous misconception about rabies. Foaming at the mouth always indicates rabies. Although drooling or foaming at the mouth can be a sign of rabies, it's much more likely to be something else. It can be a sign of dehydration, anxiety, an upset stomach, or even motion sickness. If an animal tries to eat something toxic, it will also foam at the mouth. And all of these reasons are far more likely than rabies. In some cases, animals are treated as rabid just because they are foaming at the mouth. And the reality is, it's probably just dehydrated. Rabies. Ugh. Our next myth is really quite a strange one, and it's possibly the most sinister myth on the list. In this story, we will be talking about lemmings, and their apparent behaviour of jumping off cliffs in mass suicides. Lemmings are in a subfamily along with voles and muskrats, and there are multiple species that can be found all over the world. They often play a very important role in their ecosystems, as they're an important source of food for many predators. One of the places where you can find a large number of lemmings is Alaska, and this is originally where the myth started. It wasn't started by some guy or a group of pranksters, but instead it was started by Disney. In 1958, Walt Disney produced White Wilderness, and this was part of the studio's True Life Adventure series. In this series, there was a segment about lemmings, and it claimed that they had a strange compulsion to commit mass suicide. Some scenes showed lemmings jumping off of cliffs and throwing themselves to their deaths. Of course, today we know this is not a real behaviour that they have, and it turns out that some lemmings were thrown off the cliffs by Disney filmmakers. By using careful editing and tight camera angles, Disney were able to get away with this ruse, and this is why this myth is so widely believed today. I think it's safe to say that this myth has the darkest backstory, and the Disney filmmakers should really be ashamed of what they've done. Our next misconception once again includes a whole group of animals, and these animals are the sharks. There are over 500 species of shark on this planet today, and these sharks can come in various different shapes and sizes. Sharks are often wrongly seen as evil killing machines, as they do play a very important role in their ecosystems, and without sharks many marine ecosystems would collapse. Strangely, this misconception includes all sharks, and it's that sharks don't get cancer. This misconception has a little bit of truth behind it, as it turns out that sharks very rarely get cancer. Sharks are known for being highly efficient wound healers, and they're known for having very impressive immune systems. This is why it's very rare to come across a shark that does have cancer, but we've known that sharks get cancer for more than 150 years. One of the strangest things about this myth is that there's simply plenty of other animals to choose from. Several species are known for being extremely resistant to cancer, and some of these species are the naked mole rat, the blind mole rat, the elephants, and the bowhead whale. It's almost unheard of for these creatures to get cancer, and this can sometimes be down to certain anti-cancer mechanisms. So even though there's a little bit of truth behind this misconception, it's still incorrect. But sharks are extremely interesting creatures nonetheless. If you think you know of any other misconceptions or myths that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.